Today, I'm going to be showing you making of another joint. This is the Kanawa Tsugai. Either pegged or wedged, this joint is used on mud seals and beams, and a dimension drawing is available. I'm going to break the joint down into stock preparation, marking out, sawing, chopping and paring waste, and finally assembly. Prepare the beam to the desired width and height, squared all round and with a squared end. Marking out starts by laying in the joint's three centre lines. Then the total length of the joint, an eighth of the beam width in from each extreme, and one sixteenth of a beam width away from the centre line towards the far end of the beam. Offsets of one eighth of the beam height are made from the horizontal centre line, sloping lines drawn in and carried on round the end of the beam. A central tenon, an eighth the width of the beam is marked on the end and a corresponding mortise at the other end. The end of the second beam is inverted first before marking out in exactly the same way and the waist clearly defined. To help sight the saw, some of the marking out should be carried over to sawn surfaces later on. Sawing starts with the longest cut, which is the upper slope line. The second cut is a cross cut, which intersects the end of the first cut, removing a large proportion of the waste. These two next cuts define the edges for the lower slope which needs to be paired away before further sawing can take place. Two cuts across the end grain define the sides of a channel which can be either chopped out now or later. Chopping that channel out allows these two further cuts to be made to full depth. Three saw cuts help define and remove the waste in the corners at the end of the joint. If you have really well behaved straight grain then chopping out this section down to the lower slope uh, can be done without any further attention, just chop it out uh, as I'm doing here. But in most cases you'll find, and indeed I find out here, that it's not playing ball. So the best way is to saw down a few more sections uh, in the middle of there and then chop out smaller bits at a time. A large paring chisel can be a great advantage, especially when trying to smooth off the finished surface and flatten it. These two grooves can be chopped in either order, but I prefer to do the horizontal one first, chopping it vertically on the bench, half from one side, half from the other way, to clear out that groove and then I pack that with some hardwood and chop the vertical groove down onto that and the piece of hardwood stops any spelching at the bottom of the cut. On the end of the joint the two corner recesses can be chopped away uh, to begin with quite easily because you've sawn the diagonal so that can be chopped off but then you need to pare away quite carefully the rest of the material. Ensuring all the joint surfaces are flat and smooth will really aid in putting the joint together. 
For maximum strength in service, the joints should go together without any gaps. As the joint between the beam ends is pushed together, a hole opens up into which a peg can be inserted to stop the joint coming apart. To ensure the joint gets pulled up really nice and tight, a pair of folding wedges can be made rather than a peg. These joints are not glued in timber framing, and so to reduce friction during assembly, a little application of wax can be used. The joint is assembled as far as possible by hand, and then the wedge is installed and knocked in from both sides. And here's the finished joint, and I'm pretty pleased with that. 